the Pokemon franchise has always had a reputation of solid characters, phenomenal world building, and bad plots. You can and will find satisfying moments throughout the series, but more often than not, you just can't get any of that good plot. No, not that kind. Well, we'll get to that. Moving along. While the Pokemon video games and anime do a superb job at building the incredible world of Pokemon, they usually have been caught lacking in the story department. Of course, once again, the manga is here to save the day and give us more insights and entertainment into the wonderful world of Pokemon. I don't mean to shoot down any of the narratives found throughout the Pokemon franchise, but the manga usually does a better job than the other options, and for good reason too. And if you take what many to believe the best Pokemon story and focus more on the plot, then of course you'd have a recipe for a compelling narrative. The 10th chapter of the Pokemon Adventures manga follows the story told in their video game counterparts, Pokemon Black and White version. The plot is... no 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 no. Well, yes, but no! That plot is certainly up front and center throughout this and the next chapter, but it wasn't overly distracting save for a few moments. Take this for example. May I pet your Dino? Go ahead, it loves being scratched under its chin. I'm sorry, that was a little much, but anyone could see the subtle undertones from this interaction from a mile away. At least I think it's safe to say that Yamamoto is an ass man. Uh, anyway, the plot. I mean, the actual plot. But before we get there, it's time for the standard spoiler warning. This video will spoil the events of the Black and White chapter, as well as the Black 2, White 2 chapter. The Black and White chapter follows the adventure of two people, Black and White, while they go out and try to fulfill their dreams. I've always loved that concept in the series. Each main protagonist typically has some sort of goal or dream that they hope to accomplish throughout their journey. This time around, Black is working to become the Pokemon League Champion, surprisingly a first in the series unless you count Red. White, on the other hand, is working to build up her agency in the world of Pokemon Showbiz. The story more or less follows the source material found in the games. Team Plasma says that people are hurting Pokemon by catching, battling, and living with them. They then take it on themselves to liberate Pokemon from people. Under this facade, Getsis, leader of Team Plasma, attempts to take control over the world. While Adventures follows the games pretty closely, the plot points have a greater meaning and impact on the characters and readers alike. Prior arcs in the Adventures series gave me the impression that the characters drove the story, but this arc made me think that the plot was directing the characters. I'll explain my thoughts as we continue. While Black and White are moving forward, they meet their main rival, N. N is a unique rival for the two, especially for Black. The two are complete opposites. Going against what I stated earlier, Black is actually a character that I feel drives the story. He has his own goals, and he won't let anything get in his way of accomplishing them. On the contrary, N has lived a life that you probably couldn't even call his own. He grew up in the care of Getsis, who had done everything in his power to make N believe that Pokemon would be better off without the intervention of people. When the two first clash, both of their lives get shaken as a result. N starts to think for himself after seeing Black treat his Pokemon with such respect, and Black starts to question the things that N had been saying about Pokemon being better off without people. Neither of them show this on the surface, but they both reflect on this encounter throughout their entire journey. As they go about their adventure, they meet multiple times, and each time something new awakens in our heroes. One such time, White had an encounter with N. Her whole world then gets turned on its head as a result, and she falls into a deep depressive state. When she finally regains her composure, it's like a switch had been flipped and a drive to understand Pokemon had awoken in her. Near the finale, Sharon, one of Black's childhood friends, was revealed to have sided with Team Plasma. Unlike Anne, he wasn't swayed by the Liberation ruse, and instead thought he could gain power by following them. Black then helps him out of Team Plasma's influence. Immediately afterward, the showdown with Team Plasma began. The battle is resolved with Black and Anne finally being able to understand each other's point of view. They reach the conclusion that both of their opinions have good and bad. Together, they were able to defy Team Plasma and come out as better people in the end. However, just before the dust settled, Getsis shoved Black towards Reshiram, who was preparing to seal itself back into the Lightstone after the conflict was over. Black was sealed away with Reshiram in the Lightstone, and Getsis, along with most of Team Plasma, escaped to fight again another day. All of Black's acquaintances and friends, especially White, mourned his loss and the chapter ends. We are then left with a cliffhanger in much the same way the Fire Red and Leaf Green arc ended. Luckily, the story continues and concludes in the 11th chapter, Black 2, White 2. This arc continues with two new protagonists, 
Blake and Whitley. Blake is an inspector in the International Police and Whitley is a former Team Plasma grunt. This arc has a much faster pace and takes place over four volumes. There is a reason for its length and feelings of being rushed, but I'll cover those in another video on the series. The Black 2 Y2 arc is the finale to the Black and White arc, and I prefer to think of them as a whole. The gist of the story is Blake is trying to round up Team Plasma, and Whitley is waiting to be called back into service. Things happen, their identities are revealed, and eventually they save the day alongside N, Y, and the freshly unsealed Black. The story of the Black 2 Y2 arc is fairly predictable, even though it doesn't follow the source material as closely as the prior arc. I don't think that it makes it or the prior arc bad, though. The ideas and plot points brought up throughout both arcs are really well written, and I think that they might have the most heart to them compared to the entire series. All of the arcs in the Adventure series usually have at least one incredibly amazing moment that really struck a chord with me, but the Black White, Black 2 White arcs gave me those same feelings numerous times. I've already mentioned some, but before I finish, I want to talk about a couple more. During the Black and White chapter, Black's Muna, Musha, leaves his team. N tells Black that Musha left because their give-and-take relationship had run dry. Muna is a Pokemon that physically eats dreams. Musha hungered to eat Black's dream, and Black had been using Musha's power to accomplish his dream. When Black's dream began to sour due to N's influence, Musha didn't want it anymore. Later on, Musha comes back and it is revealed that it left not because of their deal, but because it wanted to get stronger to help Black fulfill his dream. I love this moment for what it meant for Black. It left him with a lot of self-doubt and helped him to become a better person. Sadly, in my opinion, it was revealed that N was wrong. Musha left in pursuit of power to help Black with his dream. I felt that this moment was foreshadowed, and I thought we might get a more impactful reunion similar to Ruby and Fifi in the Ruby and Sapphire arc. This is probably my one complaint, but even as it stands, I still really felt the weight of the moment as well as the repercussions when Musha first left. Bianca was never a character that I particularly enjoyed in the games, or even in the beginning of the manga. She along with Sharon is one of Black's childhood friends. As I read through the chapters, I started to enjoy her as a character. She never did much for the plot, but there were still multiple times that she was able to shine. She became a solid supporting member of the cast, but there was one thing she did in particular that stood out to me more than most main characters. In Black 2, White 2, we see Bianca taking on the role as one of the adults. She acts like everything is okay, but from time to time, the cracks show. Thinking of her close friend, who for all intents and purposes is essentially dead, breaks her down. She quickly regains composure knowing that there is someone who is suffering even more due to losing Black. This gave me a glimpse into her everyday life. She probably has and faces moments like this all the time. Jump forward a bit and we see a situation where Sharon is in trouble and his status is basically unknown. Bianca breaks down at the thought of losing her last childhood friend. When Bianca and Sharon finally meet back up, she loses her composure and holds him close, just grateful to know that he is okay. These small and simple moments felt so real to me and are some of the most human reactions I've ever seen in any media. The final point I wanted to share is when Blake and Whitley learn of each other's identities, or specifically when Whitley learns who Blake really is. Up to this point, Blake had treated Whitley insanely well. He cared for her, bought her presents, and was always so nice to her. Whitley was infatuated with N, but the way that Blake treated her started to make her love wane. She found herself falling for Blake only for it to all come crashing down. Blake revealed that he only did those nice things for her to find out if she had any ties to Team Plasma. Whitley was crushed. The moments leading up to this, she has a million different thoughts running through her head, and rightfully so. Blake had gone from the happy-go-lucky Blake that she knew to the intensely serious inspector interrogating her. It was like he had become the bad guy, and ironically, she was the one a part of Team Plasma. I left out a ton of plot points, and when you read it for yourself, you'll probably be able to find different things that speak to you than what spoke to me. There is so much more to the plot surrounding the characters. Alright, this kid right here, Leo, I swear, he needs to be bonked and sent to horny gel. The first time I saw him, I was like, who is this weird kid and why is he wearing those dinosaur pants? Well, I think I figured it out. He's probably wearing those pants because he's trying to hide the pseudo woodoo in his pocket. I hope you can forgive me, but I couldn't not address all of the plot in this arc. Coincidentally, I think that the overall theme of these arcs is forgiveness, as well as understanding. N and Black were able to find understanding in each other's philosophies. N learned the value of finding his own path, and Black was able to see the benefit of relationships. White forgave N for his actions because they were a direct result in her understanding of Pokemon. 
Blake and Whitley were able to understand each other's circumstances and see one another as friends. Truth be told, I can understand all of the plot, and I can forgive the authors for it. Personally, I'm just glad I don't have to forgive them for coming up with any bad ideas for the plot. Thank you all for watching our video on the Pokemon Adventures black and white arcs. We hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe for more. We make analytical videos like this all the time, so stay tuned for more as well as the next video covering the Pokemon manga. Thank you to all of our Patreons, and if you're interested in getting your name at the end of our videos as well as seeing behind the scenes, subscribe to our Patreon where you can get even more content. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep it rad.